Good day, everyone. This is your Vedic Astrology Coach, Rahat Kapoor, and welcome to my channel, The Legend Astrologer. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and stay connected with all the upcoming transit videos and Vedic Astrology videos. In case you wish to book a personalized consultation with me, you can check out the link to my website in the comment section and the process of reaching out to me. The series of monthly videos that I have been making for you. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the month of May, which is an exciting month and how the month of May is going to be for each ascendant sign. It is a transit update. It is my monthly series that I have recently started. And in this video, I'm going to make some interesting interpretations and analysis. And we'll try to give you some guidance around the upcoming time and what you can expect and what are some of the remedial measures. So let me clarify. In this video, I'm going to talk about all 12 ascendant signs. So primarily, you need to read this transit update from your ascendant sign. You can also read this transit from the moon sign, but only at a mental level. As far as the results are concerned, as far as at the physical level, the real manifestation is concerned, the results that we look towards materializing in our life, we must read it from our ascendant sign. So to make it easy for you and interactive for you, I'm going to be sharing my screen. And I have prepared sample charts using the most sought out software, which is Parashra's Light with my calculations in terms of the Ayanamsha that I use, which I believe are fairly accurate. And I'm going to be using these charts for each ascendant so that I can give you a very representational view in terms of what is happening. We're going to talk about some key planets, which is your ascendant lord, Saturn, Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu, and some of the important planets based on the ascendant and try to understand what's happening with you in the month of May. So let us here start with Aries Ascendants. So try and understand what is happening with Aries Ascendants. So mid of April, Sun, which is Surya, has entered your Ascendant sign. And this is an opportunity that we get as Aries Ascendants for once in about an year where Sun comes in the Ascendant. And this is an ideal time to worship Lord Shiva. So the first half of the month, Sun is going to be transiting in your Ascendant. And if we look at a conjunction here, which is being formed by Sun and Venus. So Sun, most of the time, is conjoined Venus in your first house. So your seventh Lord is coming to the first house and the fifth Lord has come into the first house. And they both are forming a very beautiful yoga here. For the second half of the month, Sun would be moving to the sign of Taurus, which is from mid of May till the end of May. And this is where it will be conjoined Jupiter forming a royal yoga for Aries ascendants. So this is an optimum time to make any plans as far as your financial management is concerned. So Sun and Jupiter coming together in your second house of wealth is certainly forming a Dhan yoga for that time period. But at the same time, what you were to focus on is to learn how you can manage your finances for the rest of the year. So Sun is a significator of resources. Jupiter is a significator of wealth. So you need to leverage your resources in order to learn something new, in order to increase your wisdom, your higher learning, and also how you can manage your finances in your day-to-day -day life. The upcoming period will give you a kind of energy and message in terms of how you can take care of your expenses for the rest of the year. First half of the month, Sun is your fifth lord, so it is a very important transit for you. And Sun and Venus making a yoga here is an indicative of, of the fact that you need to focus a lot in terms of your relationship with other people. Seventh house and the lord represent those people who are opposite to you, your outer world of things, people, and event. Fifth Lord represent future. So it is an optimum time for you to establish credible and long-lasting relationship with those people who are opposite to you. Now, these could be some of the leaders who are there or some of the very highly influential people at your workplace and how you can take some favors from these people. Jupiter would be making a sign change on 1st of May. So I do not expect it to start delivering results immediately. It will take a few days for Jupiter to start delivering results. And this is your ninth Lord and the 12th Lord making a transit in the second house, forming a Dhan Yoga. Jupiter is also the significator of this house. 
So overall perspective, this is an exciting transit and the year for you. So if you're going through Mahadasha, Antadasha, Pratantadasha, where Jupiter is involved, Sun is involved, Venus is involved, and even Saturn is involved, you can reap some benefits of it over the next few days in case you're planning for certain important decisions or if you're looking for a new opportunity, a bigger role, or a growth in your life, this could be a potentially favorable time for you. Now, another important transit for you is your Lagna Lord, quite certainly. And your Lagna Lord during this time has moved to the 12th house. This is where Mars is placed and your Lagna Lord will be conjoined Rahu. Your Lagna Lord will be highly influenced by Rahu. And moving and the first house Lord moving into the 12th house is the signification of losses or expenditure so this is where your financial management will come into play and that is what you need to look at now you also must understand that mid of may till the end of may when surya will move here quite on a natural side your lagna would be under a papakartari yoga your lagna lord mars will be conjoined with rahu so you need to be very careful as far as your decision-making capabilities are concerned. And that is something which you need to focus on over the next few days. So the second half of May is a lot about having a strong mind and focusing on credible decision-making. Over the next few days within May itself, Mercury is also expected to be moving to the sign of Aries. It will come in your ascendant, in your lagna. So it will expand communication for you. It will bring in a kind of change that you would need to deal with. Your 11th Lord Saturn continues to make transit in the 11th house. So from a fortune perspective and also from wealth perspective, this seems to be a pretty much favorable time, particularly the first 15 days. The second 15 days or the second half of May is when you need to look up to Sun and Jupiter to get support and be very careful of your decision-making capabilities because your Lagn Lord Mars is under the influence of Rahu. It is under an illusion. So it will definitely have some impact. It could make you restless. But from a spiritual perspective, this is an excellent transit. Worship Lord Shiva. And at the same time, make sure that you spend enough time in terms of spirituality, doing yoga, meditation, sadhana. Try to practice mindfulness during this time. Another important remedy for you could be the more you try to ascertain your strengths and understand your key strengths and how you can build on those strengths, the better this transit would be for you during this time. Because this Ketu, which continues to move in your sixth house, will be very much supportive because it, this Ketu is forming a Viparita Yoga for you. It's your eighth lord in the sixth house. And at the same time, it will help you to boost your intelligence quotient when it comes to spiritual matters. So it, it is likely to make you more spiritually inclined and spiritually intelligent during this time. So this is something which you need to watch out for. So once again, first 15 days is good, exciting. Second 15 days, the only caveat is your decision-making capabilities. And to do that, you need to consciously working on strengthening your mind. You need to focus on doing meditation and other spiritual practices and goal. From a wealth perspective, this transit looks quite positive for you and the month looks very much promising. In case you're eyeing for new opportunities or secondary source of income, go for it. I wish you the very best. Let's now talk about Taurus Ascendants and what's happening with Taurus Ascendants during the month of May. I have made a representational chart here using the software Prasha slide in order to give you a very much detailed view in terms of what's happening as far as some of the key transits for the month of May is concerned. And I'm going to keep it very simple. So we are going to look, look at some key transits, which includes your Lagna Lord, that is Venus, Saturn's transit, Jupiter's recent move, also what Rahu and Ketu are doing, and one of the most important planets for you, which is Mercury, that is your fifth Lord, and the kind of transit it is making over the next few days. So please welcome Jupiter, which is Brihaspati, into your Lagna, in your Ascendant. And this kind of transit only happens once in 12 years when Jupiter or Brihaspati comes in your Ascendant. So the wisdom, learning, knowledge is there in your Ascendant. So watch out for two 
transits over the next few months for you, which are happening in Kendra. These two are very important and powerful Kendras for us. Wherein Jupiter is making a transit in your ascendant, Saturn continues to make a transit in your 10th house, giving you the power, wisdom, and also the capability to work towards your goals. And this is where you need to make the most of it. So as far as career progress is concerned, I consider the month of May quite positive for you. As far as the first step is concerned, of course, it will take some time if you were to achieve some pursuits or if you were to apply for a new job or look for new and bigger opportunities. The next few months could be promising. But at the same time, this is the ideal time for you to start putting in some efforts if you would be looking for a change of work or change of job. Jupiter's transit for you demands that you initiate learning to gain higher wisdom to build your intelligence, which can help you to improve things as far as your workplace is concerned. So this is the key message that Jupiter and Saturn are giving you during this transit. Saturn is also one of the karaka, one of the significator of the 10th house, which signifies work and dedication and discipline towards your work. So continue to be committed in terms of what you would be doing. Jupiter is gaining directional strength in the first house. There are blessings of the Degapada Devata. So this is quite an optimum time for you to be able to achieve bigger things in life. So this is the time for planning. So May, month of May, because Jupiter will not really start delivering results immediately. Sun will also come in contact with Jupiter, forming a royal yoga in your ascendant. So the second half of May is quite crucial for you, is very important for you as far as your overall manifestation is concerned. So Jupiter is not the most ideal planet for you, but from a natural benefit perspective, and also considering the fact that it is coming in contact with your fourth lord, will bring a sense of satisfaction, will bring a sense of rejuvenation, and the upliftment of mental peace for you in the second half of the month. Mercury, which is your fifth lord, one of the most important planet for you, which rules future which rules progress. It is the seat of the king. So in order to become successful and make some progress in life, Mercury plays a very important role for Taurus ascendants. Mercury would, for the first 10 days, continue to move through Pisces, which is a sign of debilitation. But then it is in conjunction with Rahu and Mars. So it is under the influence of Rahu and Mars. However, on 10th of May, it is moving its sign and it is entering your 12th house in the sign of Aries. From that perspective, I would say that second lord moving to the 12th house would definitely increase your expenditure. But I always say when expenditure increase, so does your income. Your future should be very much restricted and be specific towards spirituality. Now for the first few days, Mercury and Venus will be forming a yoga in your 12th house in the sign of Aries. They would be conjoined. And for about five days, sun will also be there. So there will be a three planetary yoga in your 12th house. Something that you have to watch out for for that point in time is that you should be able to get a good night's sleep. So your sleep could really be disrupted between 10th to 15th of May. So this is something which you have to watch out for. So take some conscious steps. Make sure that you exercise, you eat right, and you work out each and every day the time that you're spending. Mars and Rahu's conjunction in the 11th house, which continues to be, and as in when time progresses, Mars is going to come in close contact with Rahu. You need to focus a lot in terms of your relationship with those people who are opposite to you. Those people who are married, they have to be cautious during this time, very much careful, and practice humility. Most importantly, listen to your partner. Try to establish credible relationships with your partner. Now, on a brighter side, Later in the month of May, I think around 19th or 20th of May, Venus is going to be moving in the sign of Taurus in its own house and in your Lagna. So together, Jupiter, Sun and Venus would be forming a yoga in your Lagna. And the good news is Venus holds the great dignity and the supreme power and authority in this conjunction. So that is the time, the last 10 days of the month are quite exciting for you in terms of making some plans because this yoga is going to be there. And throughout the transit, Venus is going to be anyway be conjoined with 
Jupiter. So any learning that you take, any course that you pick up during this time will give you long lasting results. As far as remedy is concerned, Mercury is making a transit in your 12th house and you must worship Lord Vishnu during this time. Use mantras of Mercury or a simple mantra which could be Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya during this time, which will be highly beneficial for you as far as getting mental peace is concerned. You can also read Vishnu Sahasranam in order to gain mental strength, in order to ensure continuation of your work with limited blockage. And this would really remove some of the pressing blockages that you might be facing during this time. So mixed month, I would say, but you need to watch out for these conjunctions. And as and when the month passes by, it is only going to get better for you. I wish you the very best. Let's now talk about Gemini Ascendance and what's happening with Gemini Ascendance as far as the month of May is concerned. Now, I have prepared a chart using my software, Prashas Light, to give you a very clear and a representational view of what's happening, some of the important transits that I'm going to talk about and how the month of May is going to be. You can take some insights and also I'd like to suggest some remedies for you which you can use in your day-to-day -day life. So we're going to talk about your Lagna Lord, that is Mercury or Buddha, the transit of Jupiter, which would be moving to the sign of Taurus and will stay there for the next one year. We'll also talk about what's happening with Venus, which is the most important planet for you, which is your fifth Lord, and Saturn. And also with that, we'll also talk about Rahu and Ketu and how their transit will have an impact as far as the month of May is concerned for you. So let's talk about your Lagna Lord, Mercury, and what's happening with it. So for the first 10 days, Mercury continues to make a transit in your 10th house. Mercury rules your ascendant yourself and also the 4th house, which is happiness, your Sukhabhava, the place where you get mental peace, where you feel most protected and safe environment. This Mercury is making a transit in the 10th house. Mercury is said to be the primary significator of the 10th house. From that perspective, it does very well. However, it is in its sign of debilitation and it is not achieving Nietzsche Bhanga during this time. So as far as some of the decisions related to workplace matters are concerned, for the first 10 days, it could be a bit challenging because this Mercury is also conjoined Rahu. So there is a political influence that you could experience at your workplace, some political situation. So stay away from politics and focus on your work. Leverage the energy of Mars during this time because Mars is the one that is gaining directional strength in this house. So out of the conjunction of these three planets that you see here, Mars holds a greater say. So you need to make sure that you work out, you exercise each and every day and stay very much energized as far as your workplace is concerned. It doesn't matter whether the decisions that you're taking at your workplace are the best decisions that you could. But if you demonstrate energy in front of others, it would support you as far as your credibility is concerned during this time. So make a note of it and make sure that you have plenty of energy at your workplace. Now on 10th of May, Mercury is going to move in your 11th house and this is where it will be conjoined Venus. For a brief period, it will also conjoin an exalted sun. So they're forming a very important yoga. Both Mercury and Venus are important planets for you. So this is an excellent time as far as gains are concerned, as far as any kind of recognition is concerned, because Venus is going to stay here till 19th of May. And on 19th of May, it will move to the 12th house in the sign of Taurus. So during those 10 days, it is an excellent time if you're expecting some rewards, some incentives, some sort of recognition. This could be a potentially favorable time for you in case your Dasha, Anta Dasha is supportive because your Bhagyesha, that is Saturn, continues to make a transit in the ninth house. It is very much supportive of your fortune, of your Bhagya, any long distance journeys that you take. Anything that you do in order to build your higher level learning or any kind of wisdom that you wish to take or blessings from your guru or your mentor or any kind of message that you were to take. Your 10th Lord has moved into the 12th house and Jupiter is also your 7th Lord. 
and it will make this transit and be there for the next one year. But at the start of it, it is a good time to practice spiritual pursuits. And spirituality would come very natural to you. Over the next few months, I would say that you would be able to uplift yourself spiritually because whatever you would do as far as these matters are concerned, you will pick it up in a very fast manner. The other reason for that is because Ketu continues to transit in your fourth house and this Jupiter will be aspecting your Ketu in transit. So this is again going to support a lot of spiritual intelligence and you might get into some sort of teaching that you could do for other people. You could influence other people more of a being a spiritual speaker or a talker or a messenger in terms of, you know, for the welfare of people and how they could come out of you know, depressive tendencies. And that's how you can have some healing abilities or develop certain powers during this time. So if you have certain interest, make the most of uh, this transit is what I would say. Now, Venus finally, uh, was, which is conjoined an exalted sun for the first few days, would be moving to the 12th house. This is where you need to watch out your expenses. Your expenses, as far as if it is in educational pursuits, it is great. But if it, they are unnecessary, then that could be a cause of concern for you. So you might spend on luxuries, you might spend on comfort, you might end up overspending because Jupiter is there, which is going to expand the significations of Venus. So you have to be mindful. You have to be cautious of this time and try to save as much as you can and wait for this Venus to move into your ascendant to gain maximum out of this time. So I would say that from a well-being perspective, it is a promising month, but overall it is a mixed transit because considering the fact that your expenses could be on a higher side, and this is something which you have to be watch out for and be careful of, try to have better financial management. Now, as a remedy, spirituality is something which you can do. You can chant mantras of Shakti or Lakshmi or Durga during this time, any female deity, which could be highly beneficial for you because your Shukra or Venus is going to have a significant transit. Even Sun is going to be entering the sign of Taurus in your 12th house. So your 12th house will have a three planetary conjunction. So therefore, anything spiritual that you do, any sort of meditation that you do and watch your sleep, make sure you have good eight hours of sleep at least to have a very energized day all through the day. Exercise, eat right, and I hope you have a blessed month. Thank you very much. Let's now talk about Cancer Ascendance and what's happening with Cancer Ascendance as far as the month of May 2024 is concerned. So this is the transit report for all Ascendants, and here we are with Cancer. I'm going to talk about some important transits, some important planets for you. That includes Sun, Surya, which is your 10th Lord, Jupiter, which seems to be your 9th Lord, or your Bhagyesha, the, tra the transit of Mangal or Mars, which is a 5th Lord and a very important planet, and also Saturn, how it continues to make this transit, and importantly, your Lagna Lord as well. So your Lagna Lord makes a transit every two and a half days, but over the course of the next few days in May, it is going to come in contact with a number of planets. So it is quite an eventful month for you because your Lagn Lord is going to come under the influence of most of the Grahas. It is going to be transiting and coming in contact with all of these Grahas through the month. And this is quite an eventful time for you because Jupiter has made a transit in your 11th house, the significator or the Karaka of the 11th house. It was already making a good transit in the sign of Aries in your 10th house, where Jupiter is also one of the significator. Now it has moved to the 11th house. Your ninth Lord is in the 11th house, forming a Dhan Yoga during this transit. So I would say that over the next few months, you can expect some sort of increment or an increase in your pay scale, or a new opportunity that could give you more wealth, that could give you more income, that could support your material life and material gains. So that is something which is quite likely. But this month of May is more of a planning month for you, okay? So that you reap the most benefits that you can of Jupiter. You also must remember that your 10th Lord is 
making an exalted transit in the 10th house itself, which is Surya for you. That is your karma karak. It rules your profession, your job, and the work that you do, your actions in the society. On mid of April, sun made this transit in an exaltation sign. Sun also gains directional strength. In this house, it is in great dignity. So as far as any decisions related to your career are concerned, this could be a potentially favorable time for you. Your workplace environment is likely to improve during this time. Your workplace environment is likely to improve during this time and you're likely to be supported by other people during this month because this sun is going to be conjoined with Venus for the first few days. Now, Venus will move to the sign of Taurus. Sun will also move to, to the sign of Taurus on 15th of May and it will stay there with Jupiter for the remainder of the month, forming a royal yoga in your 11th house. So as far as gains are concerned from your career or of your profession, this is quite a favorable time. This is also a favorable time in terms of any sort of gains which are concerned that could help you grow and be successful in your profession or what you do. Make sure that you spend enough time in higher learning in what you could learn. Because of matter of fact, as a coincidence, your fifth lord continues to make transit in your ninth house, which is forming a yoga, supporting your higher learning. This Mars is conjoined with Rahu and is also being conjoined with Mercury for the first few days of this transit. However, Mars holds a greater say here because it's in its friendly sign in the sign of Pisces. And Jupiter has made a change. It is going pretty strong. So you need to look up to Mars and put your energy and enthusiasm in learning something new. Travel could also be on the cards for you if you're planning to have a long journey or those people who are planning to make a settlement outside of the home country. It could also give you a permanent settlement during this time. So this is something which you must watch out for. Your 10th house, 11th house and 9th house during this time is highly influenced by a number of grahas. So from a fortune perspective, your workplace environment should improve and you should expect and experience gains of some kinds. And moon over the next few days is going to come in contact with all these grahas and is going to be influenced by most of these planets. So watch out your decision-making capabilities, your decision-making abilities here. Saturn continues to support in the 8th house, more from a transformational point of view. So any change that is coming, you should be ready for it and take it with open arms. I say that overall, it is an exciting month for you and I wish you the very best. Now let's talk about Leo Ascendants and try to understand what's happening in the month of May for Leo Ascendants, the king and ruled by Surya or Sun, that is the king of all planets. So in this video, I have prepared a chart using a sample time and the time when Leo is rising. And this is just from a representational point of view so that I could explain things to you in a very simple and an elaborative manner at the same time. I'm going to talk about some important transits in terms of making it simplified for you to understand this transit and give you some key takeaways and also some remedies. So I'm going to look at the transit of your Ascendant Lord or your Lagan Lord as first, which is Sun or Surya, an important planet for you. Sun for the first half of the month continues to make the exalted transit in the ninth house. Sun is also one of the significator for the ninth house along with Jupiter because Sun represents father or father figure or some sort of leader or a mentor that is there. Sun, your Lagna Lord, is conjoined with Venus, which is your 10th Lord. These two are forming a yoga for the first 10 days of the month of May. And Jupiter is in your 10th house for the next one year, really focusing on expanding your workplace proposition or what you have been doing. So the first 10 days of the month are quite important because both Sun and Venus are forming a yoga. So in case you're looking for a new opportunities, as far as your work is concerned, a new job or some sort of move, as far as your career is concerned, this could really favor you. So in case you're applying the first 10 days are 
quite favorable for you in order to make those pursuits, in order to move forward with what you have been doing all this while. Now, the second half of the month, Sun will make an even more interesting transit. It's even more interesting than being in the sign of Aries for you. Because Sun is going to move to the 10th house and it will be conjoined with Jupiter for the remainder of the month. Both Sun and Jupiter are forming a royal yoga in your 10th house where you have Sun that is gaining directional strength. It is your Lagan Lord making a transit in the 10th house, forming a yoga for you. Along with Jupiter, that is your ninth, that is your fifth lord, one of the most important planet for you, and both are the significators of the tenth house. Sun is from a resource perspective, and Jupiter is from a learning perspective, wisdom that you use at your workplace. So, in order to learn, you need to leverage your resources for the second half of the month in terms of learning something which you can apply at your workplace. So, this is quite a potential and an eventful month as far as career-related pursuits are concerned, as far as workplace success is concerned during this time. The only challenge or the caveat for you is that your Bhagyesha Mars continues to make a transit in the 8th house. So this has gone a bit weak as far as its placement is concerned. Moreover, it is conjoined with transit Rahu. So your Bhagya is under the influence and affliction of Rahu during this time. So there could be a possibility that you might have to put five times more the efforts that you would put. But if you put that, there could be some good news as far as your career or workplace pursuits are concerned. And hard work will be in your life because you see Saturn will continue to make a transit in your seventh house where it gains directional strength. It is in its move to go on a sign. It is aspecting your ascendant. So it will give you the power of labor. Though this aspect is only 50%, but the Saturn also aspects your ninth house. The Saturn also aspects your fourth house, which will ensure that it brings you out of the comfort zone and tries to make you work really hard towards things. So you will not shy away from putting in any efforts. Now, in order to make the most of this transit, you need to look towards Sun and Jupiter. Any mantras that you use would be for either Sun or Jupiter. Offer water to the sun first thing in the morning as you take a bath and rise with the sun. Rise either before the sunrise or at the same time during the sunrise during this time. You need to ensure consistency and that is what the transit sun demands for you for the next few days. The more consistent you are in your daily habits, daily routine, the better it would be for you. The change will come easy. Any transformation, even if it has some bit of pain, should be quite good for you. So I expect an eventful month for you and I wish you the very best. Let's now talk about Virgo Ascendants and what's happening in the month of May as far as Virgo Ascendants are concerned. Here I have prepared a chart using the software Parashras Light to give you more of a representational view to make things easy for you and simple for you to understand. So we are going to look at some key transits for the month of May to give you a holistic and a detailed view in terms of what's happening in the month of May, what are some of the takeaways, challenges, and I can also suggest some remedies as far as minimizing some ill effects of some planets are concerned. So firstly, most importantly, we would look at your Lagna Lord or the Lord of the Ascendant, that is planet Mercury. And what is happening with Mercury during this time? So the first 10 days, Mercury continues to make a transit in your seventh house in its debilitation sign. So Mercury has fallen during this time because A, it is in its debilitation. B, seventh house is also considered Maran Karak for Mercury. And there is also a Maran Karak, Mars, during this time. So the first 10 days, I would say, are the days of witness not putting an extreme caution in your daily routine because you would need to put in a lot more efforts as far as your energy and overall vitality are concerned. And also, there could be challenges with regards to your communication because both these planets are losing their significance and they are under the influence of Rahu. So you need to watch out your communication. You need to watch out your levels of energy. The first 10 days, 
you would need to put in a lot more efforts as far as your communication is concerned, a lot more energy as far as your daily life or your routine is concerned. However, I can say that the blessing is that the dispositor of this house, which is Jupiter, has made a transit in your ninth house. In the Bhagya Bhava, Jupiter is also the significator of this house. So from that perspective, it is more of a protective transit because in transit, what is going to be active is the aspect of Jupiter and Jupiter will be aspecting your ascendant. So it will ensure that if you have been in your shell for quite some time because you have a transit Ketu in your ascendant, this Jupiter will really pull you out and ensure that you're out in the world and you're very much out there and you're not restricted towards your shell. You are there to influence others, you are there to learn, you are there to share your wisdom with others and this is what is going to be happening during this time. Now interestingly your partner needs to be careful and you need to focus a lot in terms of a relationship as well, particularly the first 15 days of this transit because one side there is Saturn and the other side there is Sun forming a Papa Kartari Yoga on your 7th house. And I'm not trying to scare you, but this house also is under the influence of Mars and Rahu during this time. So your relationship with those people who are opposite to you, particularly those people who are married or those who are in a relationship, your relationship needs utmost focus and attention for the first 15 days of the month. So this should be the focus of the hour. Your partner could be supportive during this time and you must listen to them. You must communicate and you must try and understand their perspective. This is more of a relationship focus and advice for you. Try to make the most of it. However, Venus being there in your eighth house, which we also call the Mangalya Bhava, is going to support your relationship pursuits. It's going to bring some sort of peace as far as your household matters are concerned during this time. And it is an important planet for you because it is your Bhagyesha. So Venus is going to be moving in the ninth house where it will be conjoined Jupiter for the remainder of the month of May, which is perhaps the last 10-11 days of the month of May are quite beneficial because you will have two planetary conjunction during this time between Jupiter and Venus, which is your ninth lord and your seventh lord forming a beautiful yoga here and this is where you would really see your relationship strengthen and also bringing a lot of wisdom in anything that you do. So from a Bhagya perspective, fortune perspective, it is an excellent time. Your Venus will be in great strength, in great dignity. This will also be conjoined with Sun. You will have Sun as well. You will have Venus as well during this time. Both Sun and Jupiter are forming a royal yoga. So firstly, you have both these planets who are the significator of the ninth house for the second half of the month of May. And later, they will be joined with the ninth lord. So your fortune will be very much favorable. So any major decisions that you have to make should come towards the second half, end of the month of May or early in June, which could be quite fruitful for you. So decision, the decisions that you take during this time would help you have some long-lasting results. So this is also the time for you wherein you should worship Surya. You should offer water to sun every day and sun demands consistency in your life. From a remedial perspective, as far as mantras are concerned, since Jupiter is making a transit in your ninth house and this is conjoined Venus, you can use any mantra related to Lakshmi or Durga. You can worship or you can also read Sri Suktam on a daily basis which will give you the power of good thinking and also support you in wealth creating opportunities. So this could be the focus of the hour for you.
Saturn continues to make a transit in the sixth house. It will support you in competitive activities. It will support you in job-related matters as far as the second half of the month is concerned. So from a transit perspective, it's more of a mixed transit, a mixed month. So you need to watch out for the space. And as and when the time would progress through the month, it is going to get better. And I have shared with you some things that you have to be careful of, particularly in relationship matters. And your bhagya is going to be supportive gradually as and when time progresses. Now, another important point to be noted is that your 10th Lord is making a transit in its debilitated state, conjoined Rahu and Mars for the first 10 days of the month. Mercury is going to move to the 8th house for a brief period. It will be conjoined Venus. It will also be conjoined Sun for that time. So transformation is inevitable as far as your workplace matters are concerned. So you need to stay extremely low key for the whole month as far as your job is concerned or the kind of work that you do. You might need to take a break or go on a vacation or do something to build your mental peace during this month. But then this will be much better as far as Mercury being in the seventh house is concerned. Because when it comes here, at least it would ensure that you have some support as far as wealth or savings are concerned. And this is something which you need to think about. How you can save more. How you can learn to be financially independent. Or if you are financially independent, you need financial management and that kind of knowledge during this time. So make sure that you learn those nuances. And if you were to feel protected as far as your workplace is concerned, stay safe, stay secure. And overall, I say it's a mixed month. First half is a bit challenging. Second half is getting better for you. I wish you the very best. Let's not talk about Libra Ascendance and what's happening with Libra Ascendance as far as the month of May is concerned. So I have prepared a chart for Libra Ascendance to give you more of a representational view in terms of what's happening when I'm using my software. I have plotted a chart. In this video, I'm going to talk about some key important transits for the month of May, would we'll give you some takeaways, try to keep concepts very simple, and also suggest some remedies that you may need during this time. So firstly, let's begin with the transit of your Ascendant Lord or your Lagna Lord, that is Venus or Shukra, which continues to make a transit in your seventh house in the sign of Aries for the first 19 or 20 days of the month of May. And for the first 15 days, this Venus is conjoined and exalted Sun in this house. Sun is not considered to be like the best in the seventh house, but Venus is the significator of the seventh house. Venus is also your Lagna Lord. So its position in the seventh house is giving it additional strength or Bala. And that is along with an exalted sun. So thankfully, Venus will not be in a deep in, in a deep combustion as far as this transit is concerned, though it is conjoined Surya, but deep, con, deep combustion is not happening. So therefore, its signification would still be there as far as this house is concerned. And both are aspecting your ascendant, your lagna. So they demand authority. They demand finesse in terms of anything that you do. This month is about improving your overall personality and what you do for a living. So you need to come out in the open. You need to demonstrate your leadership capabilities and the power of interaction with others. And try to make the most of the time by these aspects. Venus will then, for the next 10 days, the last 10 days of the month, make a transit in the sign of Taurus, which is its own house. And this is where it will be conjoined Jupiter and also Sun, which will make a transit in the sign of Taurus for the second half of the month. So there'll be a three planetary conjunction for you for the last 10 days of May. That could bring in some sort of transformation of sorts as far as your competition is concerned. You would need to put in a lot more efforts if you were to gain. So the last 10 days of month and the first few days of June could be particularly challenging because there could be a certain change. There could be a certain transformation. There could be a certain decision. Now, whether this decision is in your favor or not, would really be dependent on the kind of dasha, anta dasha that you are running during this time. The saving grace is that your yoga karaka planet 
which is Saturn. And that planet continues to make a transit in your fifth house in its Mool Tricona sign of Kumbha or Aquarius. And this is what you need to look up to during this time. Make sure that you worship Lord Hanuman. Make sure you worship Lord Shiva. Any mantras that you use which are related to Saturn or those planets which are placed in the fifth house of your chart would be highly beneficial during this time because Saturn rules mantra for you. It is the ruler of mantra bhava or mantresha. So this could be a potentially favorable time as far as channelizing the energies of these mantras are concerned. Your Bhagyesha, which is ninth Lord Mercury, continues to make a transit in the sixth house for the first 10 days of the month. Now, this is kind of a double or a, I would say a triple whammy kind of a situation because Mercury is debilitated in this house. It is not considered to be the most favorable space for Mercury and it is under the influence of Rahu and Mars, which is quite strong or rather much more stronger than Mercury during this time. Though Mercury would be moving forward, so the first 10 days, you need to be careful as far as your decision-making capabilities are concerned. You need to be careful from other people. So try and stay away. And if you were to get into a shell, do that. Do not be, I mean, avoid any public appearance. Avoid any kind of social media argument or any kind of confrontation or a conflict during this time. So you need to be extremely careful of what you say and the discussions you get involved in social media. Stay away from bullying and avoid any kind of reaction that could be potentially detrimental for your own self. This Mercury would be moving to your seventh house. Though Mercury is not considered the best in the seventh house, but this will not be alone. This will be conjoined with Venus and for a brief period with Sun as well. But most of the time, it will be conjoined with Venus. So it has certain support as far as this house is concerned. Both of them are forming a nice yoga during this time. And this is when your personality would really come out in a very strong manner as far as your communication capabilities are concerned. If you have a partner or a spouse or if you work with other people, make sure that you reach out to them to get some support because you're likely to be supported by people who are opposite to you. So make sure that you take their advice and make the most of it. Jupiter has made a transit in your eighth house. It is going to stay in the eighth house for the next one year. This is the stepping stone of transformation. Change is inevitable. Your third lord is moving into the eighth house. Your sixth lord is moving into the eighth house. Situation could become challenging for you. Circumstances could be challenging, but this is a Viparita Yoga. You must remember that you will eventually rise. How? If you learn continuously. This is the age of learning. This is the year of learning. And you need to learn hidden concepts. You need to apply research in order to gain higher wisdom or higher level of knowledge. You have huge potential these, this year as far as your spiritual goals are concerned, as far as your spiritual knowledge is concerned. So if you were to learn Jyotish Shastras, this is an excellent time for you. If you were to learn astrology, whether Vedic astrology, Western astrology, any form of occult, tarot reading, it is an excellent and quite a favorable time for you because you will pick up things in a very fast manner and you will demonstrate a lot of maturity as far as your work is concerned as well. And it's a mixed month overall, but I wish you the very best. Let's not talk about Scorpio Ascendance and what's happening with Scorpio Ascendance as far as the month of May is concerned. So I have prepared a chart to give you a more of a representational view in terms of what's happening based on the chart which I have prepared using my software. I'm going to talk about some important planets, give you some advice, some tips. You will have some takeaways and some remedies as well that you could use in the month of May for your own preparation. So most importantly, firstly, let's try and understand what's happening with your Lagn Lord or the Lord of the Ascendant, which is Mars or Mangal. Mangal also rules your sixth house. This Mars continues to make a transit in your fifth house. The Lord of Ascendant is in the fifth house. It is forming a nice yoga here. 
However, it is conjoined Rahu. It is also conjoined debilitated Mercury. But the good news is this Mars is in great dignity. It is in great strength. So it is unlikely to be influenced by any negative influences of either Rahu or Mercury during this time because it is in great strength. So it will ensure that it puts a lot of focus in terms of your future and future decision-making capabilities. So this is something which you need to watch out for. This is something which you need to look up to. Your energy is there with you at the moment. And the more you work out, the more you exercise, the better the transit would be for you as far as your future goals are concerned. Because Jupiter is also making a transit in the seventh house, which is your fifth lord. This is forming an important yoga for you. Now, this is not the best house for Jupiter, but aspects are great. It is aspecting your eleventh house. It is aspecting your ascendant. And it is aspecting your third house. So from the perspective of gains, your overall self, and your valor and efforts and any kind of change is all positive during this time. And this is the also the dispositor of the sign where Mars is placed during this time where it, it is making a transit. So it will give you very good decision-making capabilities during this time because Jupiter is aspecting your ascendant. It will ensure that it brings some sort of wisdom and some sort of maturity as far as your decision-making capabilities are concerned during this time. So you need to look up to Jupiter's transit. I mean, it is just a start. It will take some time for it to really deliver some good results for you, to really make it more meaningful as far as the transit is concerned. For the first half of the month, Sun is making a transit in your sixth house in its exaltation sign. Sun is considered to be good in the sixth house. But the message for Sun for the first 15 days is because this is also conjoined Venus which is your 7th Lord and the 12th Lord during this time. The message is very clear that firstly, you need to curtail your expenditure. You need to focus on savings. You also need to avoid taking any loans or any kind of debts during this time because it could be detrimental as far as your workplace goals are concerned. So if you were to take some loans, please wait for it. Okay. The other aspect is that Sun is your 10th Lord making a transit in the 6th house could bring in a new job opportunity if you're in a job. So that is quite favorable during this time for the first 15 days because sun at least is in a great dignity. For the second half of the month, sun will move in the sign of Taurus and it will be conjoined Jupiter. So both these planets from a placement perspective, it is not the best placement. Reason for that is Sun rises in the east, which is the ascendant sign. This is the west direction where sun sets. Jupiter gains directional strength in the first house. In this house, Jupiter does not have direction. Okay, it is directionless. So therefore, from a placement perspective, it is not the ideal transit, but both of them are forming a yoga, which is a royal yoga. This is your fifth lord and the tenth lord coming together in the seventh house and both are going to be aspecting your ascendant. So your personality is going to come out really in a strong manner with the mixture of leadership and wisdom that you could put together. So that is going to get refined in the second half of the month. So from an aspect perspective, it is good. From a placement perspective, I would say it is still week. Venus is also going to come in contact with these two planets for the last 10 days of the month, where this time would ensure that the ruler of this house, which is Venus, is here. And Venus is also the significator of the seventh house. So this will demand a lot of time that you would need to spend with your partner or your spouse. And those who are looking to get married, this time could be potentially favorable for you. This time could bring in a match or a soul level connection for you. Now, as far as workplace related matters are concerned, Saturn for you continues to make a transit in the fourth house. And this Saturn would ensure that it lets you focus on building your relationship with the outer world. It could be the public or it could be people at your workplace. You need to come out 
and demonstrate yourself as a very credible, dependable, and a committed individual. So this is something how others would like to see you. And that's how you can adapt if you were to succeed. This is the kind of message which this transit has. Now, any mantras that you use, if they are associated to Mars. So if you read Hanuman Chalisa, or if you chant mantras related to your Lord Mars, that could be highly beneficial for you during this time. Or any mantra related to Guru, Jupiter, or Veda Vyasa, who is the ultimate Guru. It could be highly beneficial for you during this time. You could also worship Vishnu for the month of May to get certain benefits during this time. Overall, I would say there are some challenges, but there is a brighter light that awaits you in the second half of the month. And I wish you the very best. Let's not talk about Sagittarius Ascendants and what is happening in the month of May as far as Sagittarius Ascendants are concerned. I have prepared a chart using my software to give you more of a representational view in terms of what's happening in the month of May and how you can make the most of it, giving you some key advice, messages, and also some remedies. Certain time periods which could be good for you, what are some of the challenges which you can expect in the month of May? Now, as far as Sagittarius are concerned, Let's start with the key important transit of your Lagn Lord or Lord of the Ascendant, which is Jupiter. Jupiter has moved out of your fifth house and has entered into the sixth house in the sign of Taurus. Your Lagn Lord coming into the sixth house is forming an important Dhi Mantha Yoga, which is the yoga for intelligence. So the next one year, you could look up to Jupiter in order to improve and enhance your intelligence. You could also ensure that your job-related matters are going to get improved. But this is the time for you to start putting in efforts as far as your job is concerned, as far as your daily routine is concerned. So your daily routine demands learning that needs to be a part of your daily chores. So make sure you read a chapter or two every day. If you can't read a chapter or two every day, make sure that you leverage your free time in meaningful activities that are related to learning. And this is the way how you can make the most of this transit. So you must look out and watch out for this particular transit here. Jupiter will also continue to support you in terms of competitive activities and also in terms of overcoming any kind of competition that you face in your day-to-day -day life. But you need to start putting in efforts because the Saturn that continues to make a transit in your third house demands valor, demands efforts and commitment in anything that you do. If you were to grow, if you were to sustain, you need to work hard and very hard during this time. Your ninth lord, which is again an important planet for you, it is your Bhagyasha, which is Surya. So this is quite an important and eventful transit for you. The first 15 days of the month, sun is in its exaltation signs from mid of April till mid of May. Sun is in exaltation in the sign of Aries. So this is forming an important yoga for you. Firstly, Sun is the natural ruler of the fifth house. So from a placement perspective, it is great. It is in its exaltation sign. It is in its great dignity. So any mantras that you use, which are related to Surya, or you can also re recite Savitur Gayatri during this time to gain maximum benefit out of this time. Offer water to the sun or, or chant mantras related to Bhaga Aditya. It could be Om Grini Bhaga Aditya Nama. This could be the mantra for you to gain success and strength at the same time. So this sun is giving you a kind of blessing in the fifth house. So mantras related to it would be beneficial for you. And for that period, sun is conjoined Venus, which is your 11th lord. So they are both forming a dhan yoga in transit. So you're expecting a kind of increment or increase in your salary or pay or any form of reward or incentive. This could be a potentially favorable time. If you're also expecting promotion or any sort of elevation, this time period could create some opportunities for you because you might have leadership support during this time. Now, point to be noted that your fifth lord, which is Mars or Mangal, continues to make transit in the fourth house. Mars is also one of the significator of the fourth house. It is conjoined Rahu and a debilitated Mercury during this time. 
but Mars has a greater say and strength during this time. And all three planets are aspecting your 10th house. You could experience some sort of change as far as your workplace is concerned. Either a new role or an additional responsibility. And it might not be the most comfortable time in order to take up that responsibility. But you need to work in a very adaptive manner. You need to be flexible in your approach because the first few days could be challenging. But as and when the time passes, it is going to get better. This Mercury is going to move out of your fourth house. It is going to enter the fifth house. It will be conjoined with Venus and Sun for, for that period. And that is the time when it will really put a lot of focus as far as your future pursuits are concerned because this free planetary yoga is going to be important for you and sun's conjunction will only last for about five days and jupiter and, and venus and mercury are going to be conjoined here for the remainder of the time before venus moves to the sixth house where it will be conjoined jupiter where it will also be conjoined sun both sun and jupiter for the second half of the month of may are forming a royal yoga in your sixth house so any matters related to job or having a new job are likely to improve you need to put your resources your wisdom in your daily routine in terms of things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and this is quite an optimum time for sagittarius ascendants to declutter their house their home so take care of the things and those things that you do not need either give them away donate or discard this is quite a potential time to declutter and manage your daily routine at the same time which would need a lot of focus and your all your attention during this time so make sure that you make the most of this transit overall i would say it is a mixed month mixed month of events and also some struggles and hardships but as long as you keep your focus in terms of your future pursuits it should all be good for you i wish you the very best now let's talk about Capricorn Ascendance and what's happening with Capricorn Ascendance in the month of May in terms of key transits. I have prepared a chart using my software to give you more of a representational view and keep the things very simple for you to understand. And I'm going to talk about some key important transits for the upcoming month of May for you in terms of what you can expect, some highlights, some challenges, and also some remedies and key takeaways that you can have from this transit. So let's start by understanding what's happening with your Lagna Lord or Lord of the Ascendant, which is Saturn for you, Shani. And Saturn continues to make a transit in the second house in its Mool Tricona sign for this month. This is also your Lagna Lord making a transit in the second house, naturally forming a Dhan Yoga in this transit. Now, interestingly, the month of May would start with Jupiter moving in your fifth house. So both Saturn and Jupiter are forming a Dhan Yoga for the next few months for you because this Dhan Yoga would be more related to the kind of efforts that you put in your day-to-day -day life. You would need to have a mixture of hard work and a knowledgeable person and this is how you're going to build your credibility. So if you seem to be a knowledgeable person to others, you are likely to grow and succeed in your life. So this is an year of learning for you. The more you learn, the better opportunities for your growth are going to be there. Now, Jupiter would be making a transit in your fifth house. This is the significator of the fifth house. So improved relationship with your children. This could be a stepping stone for you. This could really lay out the foundation for your own future. Though it will take some time for Jupiter to really demonstrate results for you, I would say Jupiter is more of a neutral planet for you. But future is full of change, is full of pleasant surprises as far as this particular transit is concerned. Your ninth lord, which is Mercury, I'd like to pay close attention to Mercury here, which is making a transit in your third house in its debilitation sign of Pisces. Okay, and it will stay there for the first 10 days. It is conjoined with Rahu and Mercury. So Mercury's debilitation is not a good sign for you for the first 10 days. So try and stay low key as far as this time is concerned. Avoid unnecessary journeys. 
avoid any kind of unnecessary environment that you might see yourself in. So try to keep low key. If you were to isolate yourself, do that if it works for you for your own good. If you have remote working abilities or authorities, then make use of that. Try and stay away from certain people that might dislike you or that have any kind of enmity with you. So that could be detrimental towards your success because this Mercury thereafter is going to be moving to your fourth house. And this Mercury will be conjoined with Venus for the first few days. Both of them will be forming a yoga during this time. And this is the time you need to watch out for. Because for the first few days, the first five days roughly for this transit, Mercury will also be conjoined with Sun and Venus during this time. And all three planets will be aspecting your 10th house. So any decisions related to workplace 10th of May till 15th of May is quite an ideal time. Even the second half of May is good for you as far as those decisions are concerned. If you're looking for new opportunities, that is the time when you could be beneficial as far as applying for a job is concerned or also starting a new pursuit, starting a new business or a new project or any important work is concerned for you during that time. Now, Rahu, interestingly, continues to make a transit in your third house along with Mars. So your third house is under the influence of two malefic planets. Now from a growth perspective, it is good. It is going to give you more confidence eventually. But at the same time, you need to take control of your lust quotient during this time because that could be detrimental for you. So you need to take care of your emotions. You need to take care of your needs and try to maintain a balance in your life of harmony. This could be a testing phase for you because your loyalty could be put at test in case you are in a relationship or any sort of partnership. So this is something you just need to be cautious of and avoid unnecessary journeys most importantly. Now Ketu on the same side is transiting in your ninth house. This will support you in spiritual goals, in spiritual pursuits and this is where gains are going to be there. You're likely to become a more spiritual person. Venus, which is an important planet for you because it's your fifth lord. Venus is making a transit in your fourth house for the first 19 days where it gains directional strength. And Venus is also one of the significators of the fourth house. So it is in great dignity. It is conjoined with Sun or Surya. No Sun for you is eighth lord. But this is Sun is in great dignity in its exaltation sign. So it's a plus for Venus. Venus is not going to get into a deep combustion during this time, along with Sun is concerned. Thereafter, Sun is going to be moving to your fifth house along with this Jupiter, where both will form a royal yoga in your fifth house. Second half of the month of May is very important for you to make your plans and things that you wish to achieve over the next one year. That is something which you can really attract. And it is an optimum time for you to lay out those plans and at the same time focus a lot on understanding your key strengths and also areas where you are to develop. Now, interestingly, the exciting transit for you is when Venus moves into the fifth house in its own sign of Taurus. This is where it brings progress, any sort of success that you're looking forward to, whether it is rewards, incentive, it is forming a Dhan Yoga in transit. It is also pretty favorable as far as the success matters are concerned or progression is concerned. So this could really give you an authoritative position. This could elevate your status in case your Dasha and Dasha is supportive during this time. So Venus is transit is something that you have to look forward to, be it in Aries and also in Taurus, which is quite a significant time period for you. And the mantras that you use during this time should be associated to Venus or Lakshmi. So worship Lakshmi, read Sri Suktam every day to reap maximum benefits out of this time to channelize both Venus and Jupiter in the right direction during this time. Overall, I expect this to be a promising month and I wish you the very best. Let's not talk about Aquarius Ascendants and what's happening in the month of May as far as Aquarius Ascendants are concerned. So in this video, I have prepared a chart 
to give you a more of a representational view in terms of making this transit series more interesting for you and more simple to understand. And I'm going to look at some key transit, give you some very key high level messages, try to make this very simple as far as explanation is concerned. So you can have some key takeaways. What are those good times? What are some of the challenges and some remedies that I could recommend you so that you can make the most of this time. So let's start with your ascendant or the Lagna Lord and what's happening with Saturn during this time. Month of May, Saturn continues to transit in your ascendant, in your Lagna. Saturn is considered to be Maran Karaka in your ascendant. It will continue to be there for the next few months. It will go through different nakshatras and padas. However, Saturn, in spite of being in Maran Karaka, is in good dignity in your Lagna. It will continue to bring in more discipline in your life gradually. You need to learn. Either you learn the easy way, which is by your own will you change, or you learn the hard way. And this is where Saturn is going to come with a stick. So you must avoid that kind of situation and put your acts together to bring in more discipline in your life and be more organized. Punctuality is the key. Discipline is the key. And so is work. Whatever time you work, just be focused towards the work and no nonsense kind of a situation as far as this is concerned in order to make the most of this Saturn for you during this time. Because remember, Saturn is expecting your third house and the tenth house by its special aspect, which is the Upajaya aspect, the aspect of growth. So if you bring in discipline, you will succeed as far as your workplace matters are concerned. And any change that comes during this time is likely to be positive if you embrace these qualities of Saturn, which the time really demands for you to do. Okay. The other important transit I'm going to talk about is the transit of Jupiter, which has changed signs. And now it is in your fourth house. It is away from the aspect of Saturn. And from the fourth house, Jupiter is aspecting your 10th house. So both Saturn and Jupiter are jointly aspecting your 10th house for the next few months. And this is quite eventful as far as your career is concerned, because this is pretty much active all throughout the time. So you need to bring in discipline, your knowledge and wisdom into your workplace. And this year overall could be an year of new, elevated and exceptional opportunities for you in case your dasha and the dasha is supportive. So you better start preparing yourself from the month of May in terms of either applying for better opportunities or upskilling yourself so you could perform better as far as your workplace pursuits are concerned. The other important planet for you is your fifth lord, Mercury, which continues to make a transit in the second house in its debilitation sign. Now, as far as the placement is concerned, Mercury is forming a Dhan Yuga in this transit. However, it is in its debilitation. It is not achieving a Nietzsche Bhanga. It is conjoined Rahu and it is conjoined Mars. So it is under heavy influence for the first 10 days. So this is a time where you have to be careful in terms of protecting your wealth in terms of ensuring that you focus a lot in making savings and avoiding any kind of unnecessary expenditure that includes impulsive buying or impulsive purchase. During this time, for the whole month of May, something that you have to be very mindful of is your speech, what you say, how you say, because remember, you cannot take your words back. So don't get into a stage of being reactive think before you speak and be as soft as you can on other people if there is aggression that comes in your mind try to channelize that aggression in better things in life and not get into any kind of an argumentative situation or conflict with other people this mercury will eventually move to your third house and will stay there for about 15 20 days of the month of may which would be better for you from a transit perspective because for the first few days it is going to be transiting in a conjunction with Venus which is your ninth lot. Both Mercury and Venus during this time would be forming a beautiful yoga in your third house. Any change that comes in is going to be positive. The efforts that you put you are likely to achieve results from those efforts between 10th of May till 24th of May any efforts that you put, you are likely to get results 
and rewards from those efforts. And if you put one effort, you are likely to be rewarded three times or four times of it. So make sure that you make the most of this part. Sun continues to be exalted for the first 15 days in the third house, which of course demands a lot more efforts and also relationship focus as far as your spouse is concerned and your partner and you would need to mend some ties. So this could be a potential time to resolve those differences and build a cohesive and more of a communication as far as your relationship matters are concerned. And this is where you need to be more communicative because you will have some sort of authority in your communication. So make sure that you channelize your ego accordingly and not be very much egoistic. Sun will move to your fourth house for the second half of the month. Here it will be conjoined Jupiter forming a royal yoga in your fourth house. And remember your sign of Scorpio, which is your 10th house, is going to be jointly aspected by Saturn, Sun, Jupiter, and also Venus, which will come in the sign of Taurus later. So four planets aspecting your 10th house, the sign of Scorpio. This is pretty much active. So as far as workplace matters are concerned, this is going to be the area of concern and also could open doors for new and big opportunities for you in life. Overall, I would say it is an exciting month, promising month. One of the remedies that you could do is a remedy related to Venus. Keep a white flower at your home. Make sure that you declutter your house. Make sure that you clean your house by yourself. And also make sure that you sit at a very clean workspace or a work desk during this time. Declutter because you could have issues as far as cleanliness or issues with regards to things at your home is concerned. So make sure you donate, discard, and at the same time, keep your workplace neat, clean, and organized. Overall, I would say a promising month, and I wish you the very best. Let's now talk about Pisces Ascendance and what's happening with Pisces Ascendance in the month of May and what you can expect as far as key transits are concerned. I have prepared a chart more from a representational point of view so I could give you some good insights and talk about some good points and certain challenges and how those challenges could be remedied for you as well and make things very simple. Pisces Ascendance, which have a three planetary conjunction in their ascendant. Your ascendant has also been influenced by the recent eclipse. So let's first start with Jupiter, which is your Lagan Lord, your Lord of the ascendant that has moved out from the second house, the sign of Aries, and now has entered the sign of Taurus. Now Jupiter is considered Manan Karaka as far as the third house is concerned. So some of the significations of Jupiter which are related to your ascendant and the 10th house are likely to suffer over the next few months. So this time period demands a lot of attention as far as your workplace matters are concerned and your overall personality is concerned. This is the year of learning because we see learning from the third house. We see communication from the third house. Your communication demands wisdom. So if you are in the business of consulting or you could be in a situation where other people might come to you for advice during this time to seek your guidance. So make sure that you make the most of it. And also you would need some direction or mentorship. So you need a mentor or a guru, someone that you could look up to in order to channelize your decisions, in order to ensure that they instill enough confidence in yourself so that you can make the most of it during this time. Okay, So this is more from Jupiter's transit, which is your Lagna Lord. Your ascendant has a three planetary conjunction during this time. For the first few days, it has Mars, Rahu and Mercury. Mars is your ninth Lord. Now, thankfully, it holds a great authority in this conjunction. So from a fortune perspective, this is quite a favorable time. This is more of a Simhasana Yoga for you. So in case you were to progress and have a powerful authoritative position, this is an optimum transit for you. A simple remedy would be to embrace the Martian energy and qualities, which is you need to exercise eat right and have a balanced routine every day. You need to stay as active as you can each and every day. 
go for a walk or a run or exercise in the gym. This Mars is conjoined with Rahu and also a debilitated Mercury for the first few days. But with Rahu, the, this conjunction is throughout this month. So Mars holds a greater authority during this time. So this is something which you must leverage from. Your Saturn continues to transit in your 12th house. Saturn is the significator of the 12th house. It will protect your expenses. It will make you focus on saving more money. This is the kind of message that Saturn is giving you all throughout. At the same time, this is an excellent transit or a time for you to achieve spiritual goals or pursuits during this time. Because you must remember, this is the kind of message which Jupiter is also giving you. Because Jupiter during this time is going to be aspecting your 7th house and your 11th house by its special aspect. So improving relationship and at the same time opportunities for gains. So these are very positive aspects for Jupiter. But at the same time you might face some challenges in terms of managing your material life and your spiritual goals or pursuits. And this is something which you need to think through. One of the things you have to be mindful of is, again, watch your speech. Because for the first 15 days, sun continues to be exalted in the second house. Sun for you is your sixth lord. So you need to watch your speech, minimize aggressiveness, and be very soft to people. Sun will move to your third house, and this will be conjoined with Jupiter for the second half of the month, and also till mid of June. So both Sun and Jupiter during this time are forming a royal yoga in your third house. But at the same time, this time period would require you to put in a lot more efforts. And your valor or courage is going to improve significantly during this time. Your resources are going to be put in any kind of change. So you need to be change ready. You need to bring a lot of authority and wisdom in your communication Learning is the key. Stay humble and learn as much as you can. The remedy for you is to look up to or have a mentor who could help you, who could guide you during this time. Any mantras that you read, that you use, if it if they are related to Mars or Saturn, worship Hanuman during this time. This could be potentially beneficial, favorable for you. You could also worship Lord Narsimha who is one of the deities related to Mars. You can also worship Vishnu and also read Vishnu Sahasranam that will give you a lot of mental strength. If you can't recite it, you can listen to it. It will give you strength. It will give you peace as well during this time. And this will help you minimize any ill effects of the Maran Karaka, Jupiter in transit during this time. Now also remember your third house is going to have a three planetary conjunction because soon Venus is also joined these two planets in the third house. Change is inevitable and it is coming to you. You need to be prepared for it. But at the same time, you need to also understand that third house is Upachaya Bhava. It is the house of growth. If you change, you do grow in life. So make sure of these inputs and also do the remedies that I have suggested to you. And overall, it's a mixed month. But as and when time progresses, it is going to get exciting for you. And I wish you the very best. So this was the monthly update for the month of May for all 12 Ascendant Signs. I will see you soon when I talk about other interesting planetary aspects and transits for you. Thank you very much. God bless you all.